Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Learning. In this episode, we're gonna recreate this um, famous RGB color cube. Um, basically, it's really, really simple. Um, the solution is really you just map the positional value of each object into the to fit the RGB uh, value, which is uh, between 0 and 1. And by doing that, you will have this cube where one corner is red, one corner is blue and then green and then the mix of everything, all of the color of all the color is like you get the maximum white over there and maximum black at the other corner and you have the CMY, cyan, magenta and yellow on the other corner. So uh, it's rather simple if you look at the notes, it's, uh, it's actually not that complicated because we're just gonna use the point of a 3D cube and then everything else just gonna fall into place. So um, let's do this. Um, start with compositing. We're gonna use animation nodes. Save as um, RGB cube animation nodes. I'm gonna use we can use anything um, cube or sphere. Let's just use icosphere. Okay, so it's gonna be the master. We're gonna use that for duplications. We're gonna start with the 3D grid. That's it. Um, how many do we want? Um, maybe make it a seven by seven by seven. And this is all the setup um, that we need to generate a 3D grid and we just need to instance the icosphere and we have resolved already in here we can scale the icosphere if we want to okay so we have this already and we just need to use uh, to apply the color so for the for each icosphere, I'm gonna have the same material. Uh, with each one of them, I'm gonna turn on object color. Here to make a little bit faster, I turn off always, turn on everything else. So now we're gonna colorize this thing. Okay, um, how do we do this? Simply by using the object attribute output attribute color and then plug in the objects it says value has a wrong type of course because we need to supply the color combine color and here we are ready to give it a red green and blue color but each one of them will have different value depending on their positions so let's do that um, we need to remap the value. So we know that each object has um, unique positions in 3D space and it comes from this vector. So we're gonna separate the vector for each one of them and then we're gonna use a debug loop and check the value. And so the x actually have the value that's ranging between minus 3 and 3 so I'm gonna use map range we simply need to pipe in the value and then we tell um, animation nodes okay the value the minimum and maximum value is minimum mi minus 3 and 3 in this case just plug it plug that to the red value and then we get, uh, go to the next one and then check the value. We also see minus three and three once again. So we're gonna do the same. Plug into the green. And then one more is the blue color. With the blue color, we have the value ranging between zero and six. So we need to specifies 0 and 6 here uh, 
and if we plug in everything correctly we should um, in theory get the result we wanted so we have red we have uh, blue and green and CMY and then white and black so that's pretty much it for the RGB cube um, you also have other color value right like the HSV, HSL and YIQ and depending on this color um, you might either use the cylinder or use a cone that's a uh, that's makes more sense because um, I think the cylinder can give you like the spectrum of color that going that way and then you have um, less saturation and things like that um, it depends really depends what you're doing but you can try mapping the color to any value and then see see it changing save as if you want to give it like a you play with this a little bit and give it like a vector wiggle and the vector math this might be interesting with that because I haven't tested out this is the vector value and plug that in so we have the RGB cube and slightly there's a slight variations because of this uh, vector wiggle the vector wiggle itself is actually a noise if you look at the code um, and this is just a light, like a slight randomization to the to the positions of each object even though we, we see that um, all the objects are staying in that position in their own positions we are just using the the location see their position is still the same from this guy but we are changing the color we are influencing the color using the noise here so that's kind of fun you can increase the speed and you can play this I think it's quite um, quite pleasing to the eyes this color amplitude can be more or less the more you have it's like a actually if you go down it's kind of like a blurring the value this is kind of even better slight variations it's increasing the persistence and we have uh, <laughs> we have a surprise there with the color Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this live coding. It's it's a uh, pretty simple. It's just for for you if you if you ever wonder how this uh, 3D RGB cube being created. Um, in this case, we're really just mapping the vector position of each object, and depending on the minimum and maximum value here, we just make adjustment. If you actually uh, make um, this cube. Slar slightly larger you need to you might need to change the mapping let's say you are making it like 2 by 2 by 2 now the color seems to be a little bit off right you might need to change this multiply it by 2 Yeah, I think that's about right. And then we can increase the scale of the of this icosphere. If you see the the lines there, the dots, you simply turn it off using this display turn off relationship lines. And now we have this. Go to 3D view, full and there you go, you just hide the this guy and here turn on texture solid and be occlusion if you need yeah I guess that's pretty nice I'm gonna take a screenshot of this 
and that's pretty much it for this live noting um, pretty simple and easy uh, but it should be useful um, thanks again for tuning in um, any feedback suggestion let me know down below and then I'll see you in the next video